Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Armed with huge 16-inch guns, the unstoppable USS Iowa fired 2,700-pound shells that scared enemies up to 23 miles away. With over 50 anti-aircraft weapons and 25-inch guns that could do a lot of damage, the USS Iowa was like an impregnable fortress. In 1943, the World War was still going on, and the USS Iowa was in the middle of the Atlantic, taking President Roosevelt and the Chief of Staff to the Tehran Conference. All of a sudden, the steady course of the Iowa changed, and the ship violently got ready to hit something. A torpedo got loose and was going straight for the ship that was protecting the president. During a crisis, there was a close call. From the time she was built as part of War Plan Orange to the Korean War, when she never gave up, this battleship was a symbol of strength and determination. Plan Orange for War The Iowa-class battleships of the U.S. Navy were made as part of War Plan Orange, a set of Army and Navy plans for a possible war with the Empire of Japan. The plans were made in the early 1900s, but they became more important when Japan invaded Manchuria and started to grow in the South Pacific in the 1930s. The plan called for the battle line to be split up quickly so that the Japanese fleet could join the fight. Traditional U.S. Navy battle lines that moved at 21 knots were too slow to force Japanese task forces into battle. The Imperial Japanese Kong-class battlecruisers would be better than faster carriers and their cruiser guards. To stop this threat, the Iowa-class battleships were made to go faster than 30 knots. The Escalator Clause of the Second London Naval Treaty, which let the size of guns get bigger, also affected how these battleships were made. Under the direction of Admiral Thomas C. Halsey, preliminary work on the Iowa class began in 1938. Heart from the U.S. Navy's General Board By the end of the year, the contract design was almost done, but it would continue to change at the lead shipyard, the New York Navy Yard, as the final design phase began. Class in Iowa goes up she was the first ship in her class. She was ordered in July of 1939, and in June of 1940, she was laid down at the New York Naval Shipyard with the number BB-61 for her hull. She was put into service in August 1942. The wife of Vice President Henry Wallace helped pay for the ship. The USS Iowa was 860 feet long and 108 feet wide. At full load, she drew 37 feet and weighed more than 57,540 long tons. The size of the class was made to help with speed and the ship had a triple button under the armored citadel and armored skegs around the inboard shafts. The 916-inch-50 caliber Mark VII naval guns on the Iowa-class battleships could fire high-explosive and armor-piercing shells up to 23.4 nautical miles away. The projectiles weighed between 1,900 and 2,700 pounds and went as fast as 2,500 feet per second. One projectile could be in the air for more than a minute before it hit its target. The guns were in three three-gun turrets. Each turret weighed up to 267,900 pounds and needed 85 to 110 men to run it. The turrets each had their own sleeves and could be raised and fired on their own. For fire control, the Mark 38 gun fire control system was used, and the Mark 8 rangekeeper was used to figure out how to fire. This was just one of its many powerful weapons. The secondary battery of the devastating Arsenal Iowa was made up of 25-inch-38 caliber Mark 12 guns and 10 closed-off base ring mounts. When their mounts were added, each gun weighed more than 156,300 pounds. The Mark 12 could shoot shells at about 2,500 feet per second and hit enemy planes flying at 13,000 feet with great accuracy. The Mark 12 was a gun that could hit both ground and air targets. The anti-air battery of the Iowa was made up of 20 quad 40mm and 49 single Ehrlichon 20mm gun mounts that were very good at shooting down Japanese fighters. All or nothing armor was built into the ship to protect it from 16-inch projectiles between 18,000 and 30,000 yards away. From the turrets to the citadel and other important parts of the ship, the Iowa was like a floating fortress, ready to take on any enemy ship that dared to get in her way. Eight Babcock and Wilcox boilers and four sets of double reduction cross compound geared turbines made up the power plant. The power plant gave the ship a top speed of 37.4 miles per hour and a range of about 15,900 nautical miles. Iowa also had two aircraft catapults that could launch float planes for reconnaissance and search and rescue missions. After the war, she was changed so that helicopters could land on her. 
but in her many years of service, she did a lot of different things. Service in the Pacific War Captain John L. McRae gave the order to start the USS Iowa in February 1943. On the first trip, the ship and its crew of more than 2,500 men went to the Atlantic coast, where it was thought that the German battleship Tirpitz was looking for Allied ships. In November 1943, the Tehran Conference was held in Mers El Kabir, Algeria. President Roosevelt and the Chief of Staff flew on the Iowa to get there. Since the president was paralyzed, his cabin had to have a special bathtub. On its way to Algeria, the destroyer William D. Porter sent a torpedo straight for Iowa. The huge battleship turned quickly, and the torpedo exploded behind it, but the damage was not too bad, and the president was not hurt. After the conference, in December 1943, Roosevelt went back to the U.S. from Iowa. In January 1944, the Iowa left for the Pacific, where she fought in the Marshall Islands Campaign. As part of Task Group 58.3, she helped carriers fight against Kwajalein and Iniwatok Atolls. In February, the USS Iowa and her sister ship, the New Jersey, sank the Japanese light cruiser Katori after it had gotten away from truck in the Caroline Islands. A few days later, the battleship was put in the fast carrier task force and bombed Mili Atoll in the Marshalls. Two 120mm projectiles hit the Iowa, but her armor was enough to protect her. She went back to TF-58 in March and helped with airstrikes on Woliai and the Palau Islands. Post-war, a few weeks later, as the army tried to keep the Japanese from taking over Wake Island, Hollandia, and Aid Ape, the restless crew helped with more air raids on those places. In the last few days of April, the Iowa's powerful main gun was fired again to hit truck a second time. During the first part of the Mariana Islands campaign, when Saipan, Guam, and the Pagan Islands were attacked, the USS Iowa was a key part of protecting the aircraft carriers. Then, in June 1944, the Iowa was given permission to fire her 16-inch guns at Japanese installations on Saipan and Tinian. Soon after, the huge battleship took part in the Battle of the Philippine Sea, which hurt the Imperial Navy for the rest of the war. During the battles, the Iowa fought off four devastating Japanese air raids and shot down three fighter planes and two torpedo planes. 801, then, the Iowa helped the Marines land on Paliliu and helped other Navy ships in the Ryukyu Islands. Typhoon Cobra caught TF-58 in Iowa in December. This tropical cyclone sank a few ships and hurt one of the shafts on the Iowa. In April 1945, the USS Iowa went back into battle to attack Okinawa and other islands that were part of Japan. She became well known when Admiral Halsey made her his flagship for the day Japan gave up on September 2, 1945. Pictures of the Japanese surrendering on the Iowa made her one of the most famous warships in the US Navy during World War II. Serve in the Korean War during the time after World War II, the main battery of the Iowa was changed so that it could fire the W-23 nuclear artillery shell. This was a modified W-19 shell that was made specifically for the 16-inch guns. This made the ship the largest nuclear cannon in the world. The W-23 was 1,900 pounds and could make between 15 and 20 kilotons of TNT. The nuclear shells would be used by the Iowa class until 1991, when the U.S. took them out of its stock of nuclear artillery. In July 1951, the Iowa was put back into service so it could fight in the Korean War. In March 1952, she arrived to take over for her sister ship, the USS Wisconsin. On April 8, 1952, she opened fire near Wonsan, Sjin, hitting communist supply lines and making it hard for the enemy to get things done. For the next few months, the battleship and its crew helped UN and South Korean troops move forward by firing on enemy gun positions, railroads, and enemy positions. At the end of May, Iowa crossed the 38th parallel and started attacking industrial cities in North Korea. Some of the places that Iowa attacked to help UN troops were Tanshan, Chungjin, Koto, and the ports of Hingnam. The last time Iowa went into battle was in October 1952. She was General Mark W. Clark's main ship. She fired more than 16,000 rounds from her two guns in 43 gun strikes across Korea. This earned her the United Nations Service Medal and the Korean Service Medal. Explosion were not expected after the Korean War was over, the USS Iowa took part in a number of naval exercises with NATO forces. In 1958, it was taken out of service. 
The USS Iowa was brought back into service in 1982 and updated while President Reagan was in office. To make room for new Tomahawk missiles, radar, and fire control systems, the number of guns and gun mounts was cut from 20 to 12. During the Persian Gulf War of 1991, these guns were mostly used for coastal defense. A group of Marines on the ship ran them. In 1989, one of the gun turrets on the USS Iowa exploded, killing 47 sailors. People still don't agree on what caused the explosion. After the war in the Middle East, the Iowa was taken out of service in October 1990. It had been in service for almost 20 years. The USS Iowa was turned into a museum ship at the Los Angeles waterfront in 2012. Thank you for watching.